What's going on guys? So we're out here with the 2024 Forest River Surveyor Legend collaboration unit. If you've watched all the other videos, you probably understand what's going on there. Um, I wanted to dive right into this video. A lot of folks have asked me if I plan on replacing the tires that come on this Forest River Surveyor Legend. Uh, let's talk about this for a second. Hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, so for some folks, this is going to be like a ridiculous video. Some people are going to be like, why on earth would you want to replace the tires on your new RV? And then for other folks, they're like, I've watched your channel for long enough to know that you want like a 42 ply rated tire on everything that you tow. Um, the reality of it is, is I, I am a big, big tire stickler, so much so that the folks over at Coachman, when we collaborated on the fifth wheel, they actually put some J-Load Range Goodyear K-Max commercial spec tires on. They were insanely rated tires. I actually still have them. I don't even know what I'm going to do with them. If you want some 17 and a half inch insanely rated J-Spec tires, uh, let me know. Maybe I'll do some type of a deal with you. Um, on the other hand, though, I thought that those tires were way, way, way too overkill. However, when I replaced them, I threw some Continental tires on that were the same load range, except they had a 75 mile an hour speed rating versus a 65 mile an hour rating that the Goodyear K-Max have. Those K-Max tires are designed for like low boy trailers that haul bulldozers around. Those things are absolutely insane. Uh, so are the Continentals. Um, I love the Continentals. I love the Goodyears, but the speed rating was the big hindrance there. Uh, you know, that said, a lot of folks automatically assume that my focus on tires is like an extreme focus on tires. And that's not so much the case. I think a lot of people believe I'm like a tire snob. I'm not. I actually am not as worried about the brand as I am the quality of the tire. Now, that's kind of a weird thing because people automatically assume if you have a good brand, it's a better quality tire. And in some cases, that's absolutely true. That is absolutely a correct statement for a lot of brand tires. Now, the the interesting thing here in front of me is um, these are Goodyear endurance tires. I think if you've been following RV news for you know the past three years, you're very, very in tune with what's going on here. That Goodyear produced a tire for RVs called a Marathon a while back that was considered to be like one of the worst trailer tires you could get. Uh, people got them because it was a Goodyear tire, and people moved away from them because they called them China bombs. They'd essentially blow up and delaminate, and you'd have all sorts of tread-related issues and tire-related issues going back. And I'm not going to say that every Marathon on tire was a bad tire, but a lot of people did, you know, have this feeling that it was a pretty poor quality tire. Um, but the Goodyear Endurance tire, which has been around for about three years now, maybe a little longer than that, maybe closer to five years now, to be honest with you, um, it's actually had a proven track record. These are really good tires. Now, are they as good as, let's say, a Trans Eagle G rated tire for a 15 inch rim? Very rare tire for a 15 inch wheel because it's a G load range tire, which you typically don't see on a 15 inch wheel, right? Um, partially because the wheel itself needs to be able to withstand the pressure that you're going to put in the tire to meet the rating of the tire without damaging the wheel. And there aren't a tremendous number of wheels that will go past 80 PSI, or at least in a 15 inch form, from a rating perspective. Most of them are like 65 PSI max on a 15 inch wheel. Um, but a lot of people also don't understand that the actual tire you put on the wheel doesn't have to be full to its maximum PSI, right? There's different PSI recommendations based on how much load you're gonna put on the tire. And a large part of that is because you want the tire to ride flat on the road. You want the tread to sit flat on the road. If you overinflate a tire, or let's just say you fill a tire up to its maximum PSI when it's a commercial spec or a heavy duty rated tire, and you don't put the load that it's rated for on it, then the tire could actually have a kind of a wear mark in the middle of it because the tire is going to be bowing out a little bit or bowing out in the, in the center slightly. Um, whenever you look at trailer tires, the, the thing that you really want to keep in mind, honestly, is the production date on the tire, right? When the tire was actually made, you want to keep in mind um, the load rating on the tire, right? These are D load rated tires, the letter D. And you want to keep in mind what you're going to be loading the trailer up to and how much weight's going to be resting on it. I believe a D load rated tire is going to have like a 2,000 pound maximum capacity per tire. Um, so 8,000 pounds minimum on these tires. So I don't think I'm going to have any issue just keeping them on here. Uh, Goodyear Endurance Tire is a U.S. manufactured tire. It's a good tire. Uh, 
Tires can fail because you do all sorts of bad things to them. You leave them exposed to the sun too much. You underinflate them. You overinflate them. You take them down the type of terrain that they're not meant for. Uh, you let them get too hot. There are all sorts of things you can do to tires that might cause them to fail prematurely. Uh, Goodyear Endurance tires, in my opinion, are better than your average quality standard trailer tire. Would I still prefer like a Trans Eagle G-rated tire on here? Probably. Are we going to put them on here? Probably not. Uh, you know, when you go to a stiffer sidewall tire, you also go to a tire that it has less inherent suspension built into it, right? The tire is not going to flex as much whenever you are going down the road, which means a stiffer ride. That's certainly the case for like the F450 pickup truck when they put G-rated tires on that truck. Uh, it rides stiffer than a, an F350 with a more compliant tire. So. I guess the ultimate question is, is if I were to upgrade these tires, why would I upgrade them? If I were to upgrade them, I would probably go to like a G-rated tire or something just super heavy duty, uh, maybe an E-load range tire, but I don't feel I need to, again, because the overall weight of this trailer is never going to be at 8,000 pounds and I'm gonna take good care of my tires. I always check my tires and I have TPMS on, which is a really, really good thing to have, uh, not just to know when you have a blowout or if it's overheating, but just to understand where your tire pressure is, period. You know, when you take off on a trip to be able to look at a screen and say, okay, my tires are where they need to be. The number one failure reason for a tire, especially on a trailer, well, number one and number two, number one is dry rot, right? The tire's too old. You let your RV sit out in the sun for too much. You don't protect your tires. Uh, I'm going to put tire covers on these here in the next couple of weeks. Um, and B, you underinflate your tire. So over time, your trailer's been sitting out and you're like, hey, let's go camping. It's been in storage for four months and your tires are 20 PSI lower than where they should be, but they don't really look like it because tires sometimes don't sag as much as you might think they should. And then you don't realize that the tire's been on your RV for six years and you just decide to go out camping in it. And that is a recipe for failure. That's a recipe for a tire to completely fail and for it to self-destruct essentially while you're going down the road. And that's not what you want. So uh, keeping an eye on your tire condition is really important. But a brand new looking tire with a really, really old manufacture date that's been sitting out in the sun for a long period of time can absolutely be a recipe for disaster. So in my opinion, you typically want to have a tire that's no older than five years on your RV. Yeah, you might be able to get away with a little longer than that if it's been protected, if you've kept your RV in storage, if you've kept uh, covers on your tires, and if you've inspected your tires for any type of dry rot or any type of cracking to the rubber surface. And then also, just keep them inflated correctly. That's the best thing. If you have super, super heavy-duty tires that have essentially a chart that come with them to define how much air pressure you put in the tire based on the load you're going to put on that tire, then follow that chart. If you have your standard ST trailer tires, then just put the recommended amount of air pressure inside of your tires and uh, just keep an eye on them. That's really what it comes down to. But yeah, we're not going to take these off. Um, I actually like the fact that we have the endurance tires. We have endurance tires on our cargo trailer and they're good tires as well. And they definitely exceed the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer, which is really good. They're brand new and uh, there's no signs that there's any issues with them. Plus we keep them inflated correctly. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on tires. Uh, I didn't go into all the specs and all the letters. There's a lot of really great videos out there that go into how to read the numbers and letters and dates on the side of your tire. Go check those out if you want to understand that. Uh, this is just one of those areas where people are like, are you going to swap out the tires on your brand new RV with something different, like a Trans Eagle tire? I have no intention of doing that. I don't think I need to. Yes, I put Trans Eagle tires on a tiny little cargo trailer that didn't need them, but that's just because it was kind of funny and it had really cheap tires on it in the first place. So I figured if I'm going to swap them out, I might as well go crazy on it. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.